Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Domestic Trade and Distribution webinar that's being presented this afternoon by Parker Travel Collection. Today's webinar is the third in the Queensland Tourism Industry Business Capability Development three-year program COVID-19, Starting, Transitioning and Resilience. The program is going to be offered over two stages and will cover four key business activities that have been identified to help Queensland tourism businesses prepare for reopening. So stage one consists of four free webinars that have been taking place once a week up until next week, the 5th of August. These will all be available for tourism, travel and hospitality operators across the state. They're being recorded and the recorded webinars will be available on the QTIC website. Stage two will then include up to four sessions of 60 minute one-on-one -on -one online coaching sessions. These are going to be made available to eligible tourism and hospitality businesses that have participated in or viewed at least one or more of the four webinars. The Queensland Government has allocated $3 million to fund and deliver this tourism industry business capability development program for the tourism industry over a three year period from August in 2018 through to June 2021. My name's Sophie Formica. It's my great pleasure to be back with you again this afternoon as facilitator. And this afternoon, we've got a fantastic panel to address this issue for you. Joining us, we have Brock, who is the General Manager of Parker Travel Collection. Now, he's had a very colourful career in tourism that started in Queensland Government's travel centres, followed by a short stint in tourism marketing. He was lucky enough to be working with the Broadway musical um, Disney's Beauty and the Beast, where I think most of the time, other than travelling Australia, he got to become good mates with Hugh Jackman. So he wants everyone to know that he's got Hugh on speed dial. But following his brush with fame, Brock has then spent the last 25 years in Queensland tourism, firstly in hotels and resorts in North Queensland, before he joined his older brother Todd at Parker Travel Collection. Um, they, of course, have helped tourism operators across Queensland adapt and thrive via the trade over the last 20 years with very deep market and hands-on industry experience. Alongside Brock this afternoon, we have Chloe Jenkins joining us. She is the key account manager of Viatour. She looks after key operators from Queensland, New Zealand, Bali, Hawaii and the Pacific Islands. Her tourism career started um, with an RTO for regional New South Wales and since then she's worked with women's wellness and tracking companies and has now been supporting Viatour um, as an operator uh, and, and their operators for over three years. And Mick Boyland is the State Sales Manager for Queensland for Hello World Wholesale. His career in tourism started with Sun Lover Holidays and the Queensland Government Travel Centre. Um, Nick was fortunate enough to spend a fair bit of time overseas working with American Express Travel in London and the International Student Volunteers, where he travelled all over the US and Canada recu recruiting students to uh, Australia and, and other destinations. He then returned uh, about 10 years ago and has been working with the AOT Group and Hello World Travel in travel sales ever since. He certainly has a passion for the industry, is incredibly well connected with both retail travel agents and domestic suppliers. So you're all welcome this afternoon, Chloe, Mick and Brock. The title of today's session is Domestic Trade and Distribution. With our international borders shut and likely to be for some time, Developing a plan for domestic trade and distribution is more important than ever. And clearly after today's announcements, these are very fluid changes and Brock will address those. So Brock, we're going to be starting with you this afternoon. There are so many operators who we know are dealing with becoming domestic trade already already. But I'm sure that um, there are also some that have had limited or no interaction with the trade or have possibly been focusing more on international markets because that's where the bulk of their business was in the past. What are some of the options in the domestic market and what do people need to do given, as we said, things seem to change literally on a daily basis? Yeah, hey, um, thanks very much, Sophie, and, and welcome to everyone in, in joining the webinar today. You know, it's a, it's a great program that QTIC are putting on. Um, firstly, let me state, obviously, with uh, Greater Sydney just being announced that uh, they'll have the border shut from Saturday this week, it just changes the, the whole situation again. Firstly, with the trade, it, it's very important for me to stress that um, direct business is still the holy grail. When it comes to the trade, we're just looking to complement the, the current business you have. So in no way are we looking to try and change people's total business. 
Uh, it only just got announced by today through a, a SABER Asia Pacific study that 68% uh, people since the COVID pandemic hit are going to turn to travel agents now more for their expertise and what they can and can't do. So this is a really important factor for people going forward. Now, from the feedback we, we've got from the, the pre-registration questions, I've broken the, the webinar today into three parts. Uh, one, we're going to touch on trade ready, how to make sure you're trade ready. And a lot of the products, as you said, are already familiar with that. Some will be dealing with the trade for the first time. So some tips on that. Uh, we'll also then be looking at packaging, which is what a lot of people have asked about, and then finishing up looking at the different trade operators and also seeing how they're traveling in the current market. You'll see from the current slide that uh, I've split it up into five areas. There's the traditional trade, online agents, group buying, rewards and closed user groups, and also local partners, which, which I won't really touch on, but don't forget to, to reach out to your RTOs, your LTOs, and also other local operators in your area on how you can work with the trade together. But uh, just looking on at the next slide. Sorry, we've been having some, uh, yep, yeah, th thank you. Um, why deal with the trade? Okay, it, it's pretty simple. We want to attract new business. And as I said, we don't want to take away your direct business. That is the holy grail. We want additional business. And you've just got to make what's the best decision for yourself. And we'll just drop back to one. My apologies, we have had some technical issues. Ah, there we are. Uh, hey, one of the other big uh, advantages of the trade is it's minimal upfront costs. It, it's very much a user pay system. You only pay distribution costs when someone makes a booking. So that distribution cost is your commission, of course. There's increasing your sales. That, yes, so sorry? I was just gonna ask, do you think that sometimes operators, I think that's a really important point because I think there could be a reticence to understand that there really, there really are minimal upfront costs if you've never dealt with it before. Can you just touch on that a little further? Yeah, hey, there's always some costs with load fees or maybe brochure fees, but to get connected with most of the trade, it, it's usually fairly free, it's free of charge. And they're only going to pay a, a major fee, let's say being commission, when they're actually accepting a booking and when someone actually stays. So, you know, that, that's the joy of it. You're not having like advertising, fork out large sums of money, hoping you get a return. You get the return first and then you pay the fee. Okay. Um, there's increasing your sales force, uh, and I'll touch on that a bit later. Obviously, we want to drive sales to off-peak periods, and the trade is a, is a great tool for doing that. The last one is something that grows your direct sales, uh, and it's called the billboard effect. It's something that the OTAs, the online travel agents, like to uh, push quite hard, but it's been going on forever. And it's the simple process of people going to a travel agent or going online, researching product, grabbing a brochure, and it actually still leads to direct sales. So dealing with the trade can also help build your direct sales. Now, what you have to do to work with the trade. And this is where I'll really refer you back to QTIC's online coaching program that they've got in conjunction with this program. Um, join one of those programs. There's a number of operators you can deal with. We're one of them, so please choose us. Um, I had to put the self plug in there. But these are the factors that you have to do. Um, you've got to be trade ready. That's having your rate, your fact sheet, your images, your terms and conditions ready to deal with the trade. Price parity with the correct commission levels is very important, not just for individual bookings, but for the reputation and credibility for the trade partners. You need to accept the terms and conditions of dealing with the trade. Now, they might be a little bit flexible in the current market, so you know, investigate what they are. Simple and easy product. Now, when I talk about simple and easy product, let's say, say you're a hotel with 20 rooms, don't have 14 room types. All right, that's not simple and easy. If you're a tour, don't change your tour product on Mondays and Wednesdays, and then on Thursdays and Fridays, it's slightly different. That's too difficult. Genuine partnerships is what the trade is about. You know, you want to deal with the trade to get bookings in low season, shoulder seasons. The trade needs access to inventory in high seasons. So you need to work both ways. One, you know, problem I do hear quite a bit, oh, I'll deal with the trade, but only in low season. That's not mm. a genuine partnership, okay? Mm. And of course, the big gold trophy, which is something that has really come on in the last five to 10 years, is direct connection. Having reservation systems, channel managers that deal directly with the trade. Uh, society is all about immediate 
pleasure, oh, sorry, uh, immediate confirmation now. Okay. Now getting onto that distributing and that, uh, that big commission question that everyone always cringes about. Tourism is no different to any other industry. Every industry has middlemen and distributors. Now, now I'll look at my mate there, Ted, who's a, a prawn fisherman up in Harvey Bay. He wants to get his prawns into restaurants in Sydney. He doesn't have the time or expertise to go around to the 200 restaurants. So he gets the middleman. He gets someone else to transport it for him. That is no different to what the domestic trade or the tourism trade does. What the tourism trade does is transports your product to the consumer. They actually do it two ways though, because then they actually transport your, the consumer to your product. So they're doing a double job for you. Now, a couple of points with commission and your online coaching can go into this in far greater detail. Not every sale has to be at 25%. Different channels are at different commission levels. And over time, you build the commission into your pricing. So don't think you've got to do change it all tomorrow. The other big factor is everyone I will talk about today has some sort of preferred program. That is where you can engage the, with them on a greater level for greater benefits. And again, you'll find more about that on the online coaching program. Brock, is that why making sure that those other things that you mentioned earlier that things like rates and T's and C's have to be um, clear because the, the misconception that if I'm already putting my rates out as low as I possibly can and then I have to give up some commission to trade means that I feel like I might be going backwards. Yeah, and then that's where the online coaching guys can help you plan for the future. You make sure you set your rates to allow for specials, allow for different uh, packaging options and for the distribution channels. And, and as I said, remember, not every sale will be at, say, that 25% commission level. And this is a sort of a great slide that can show that type of thing. It also shows that increased sales force, which I spoke about. And it's a fairly simplistic and basic chain, but I'd really reference only look at the white boxes. You're the supplier, you start at the front, where your product end is ending on the right, at all those different agencies, different websites, to the consumer, to half a million database. That is why you deal with the trade to get to that level. And on that, I'll yeah, uh, pass on that, over I to Chloe. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's certainly that extensive reach that that overall trade offers. So Chloe, it is a perfect time to have you come back in and to talk about what the reach that you offer is for online tours, attractions and ex different experiences. Thank you, of course. So as many of you may or may not have heard of Viator, I kind of wanted to give you a really quick rundown of who we are. So a little bit of history not many people know is the fact that Viator was started in Australia in 1995 and it was then acquired by TripAdvisor in 2014. So of course it is the OTA for tours, attractions and activities, but most of all we work in both spaces being B, B2B and B2C that a lot of people don't really realise with our distribution. So one of the areas of our B2B business is of course our travel agent program. Now it is a completely independent program where agents can sign up, whether they're home based, they work with an agency that's not a partner of ours. And currently we've got around 64,000 agents registered. A lot of those predominantly are US home based travel agents who need the access to those platforms. All the agents earn commission, so they're not locked into you know, their businesses locked partnership agreements as well. Part of our B2B is of course our partnership. So we also have really strong partnerships. We've got about three and a half thousand businesses that we work with and that works through various ways, whether it be white label websites or whether it be powering the bookability on their platforms. So some may have seen Qantas is a really good example for Australian operators. Anything you do in terms of activities on the Qantas website to earn Qantas points is actually powered through Viator. Now, in total, between our partner and affiliate network and our agents, we have around 150,000 agents that we have touch points with. So making a point to Brock's stat you know, earlier in the call, agents are going to be something that are kind of coming back alongside OTAs in the space. Now, of course, we do have the B2B, the B2C side, sorry. So the B2C side is, of course, through the Viator website and then also the Viator app. And then as well, TripAdvisor app and the TripAdvisor website. 
project. So in total, with all of the TripAdvisor media groups, we have around 523 million app downloads. So people are using these apps, they are looking for them. Being mobile ready is something that is so critically important right now. Um, and it's just something to be really mindful of in terms of that space. So basically with Vital, we want to talk about you know, staying trade ready. So I'll just go to the next slide if that wants to load. Um, so it's really important when you're working with any OTA and following up from Brock's advice is it's one thing to list with an OTA. It's another thing to stay relevant. So my biggest recommendation is never list and leave. So don't kind of tick the box and go, perfect, I'm with OTAs, done and dusted, never have to look at it again. As long as bookings are coming in, it's perfectly fine. That's not what you need to do. Every OTA will be updating their platforms, they'll be updating their systems, they'll be changing their technology, whether that be increasing image count, content. So making sure you are logging in regularly to make sure your everything is up to date. So things like availability, are you still bookable? You know, do they automatically extend your rates or is it okay you load it up until 2018 and that's mm -hmm. it? Um, a lot of OTAs might not pull through available, you know, um, rates and everything from an API system like a RESDI or something like that. So you still need to go through and load that. So make sure you're bookable, number one. Um, you know, if you have live availability, make sure you're connected. Speak to the provider and say, you know, can I connect through to Vital? That makes your life a whole lot easier so you don't have to manage your inventory on multiple platforms. Um, if you don't have a live booking system, it is something to look at, especially in this quieter time. Can I just ask you, you mentioned multiple platforms and, and that often happens even as a consumer yeah. where you might see something and want to book it on one platform and it's available and then you realise that it's actually booked out somewhere else. Can you talk a little bit more about whether being on multi-platforms is a good idea? Is it a size thing? When should you be using one singular operator, uh, one platform or when you should use multiple as an operator? Look, it definitely depends on your offering. So I would say look at all of the partners and see what they provide, whether it be they are a specialist in your key market, whether they focus on multi days. So being prepared and researching who you're listing with, I would say is very important. I think it's integral to be across multiple. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. It's like the same reliance on going, well, I'm visible because I have a website. That doesn't mean people will find you. So it is important to be across multiple, but it's important to be across multiple of the appropriate ones. Um, I would say in terms of just managing listings, it's a decent work and I think people have realised that over time. What used to be simply send your rates out and whatever comes back, comes back. It's now about managing your platforms and managing your presence. So. I do recommend people do really look at who they're listing with to make sure that they are appropriate to their target market or the markets they're trying to approach. So the next thing I would probably cover off is content, making sure it's correct, current and updated. Um, of course, every year we have buzzwords, so make sure your buzzwords aren't stuck in the, you know, the 90s or something like that and they're using the current terminology of inclusive language, making sure you're not just saying we visit the park and then off we go. You really want to take that customer on a journey from you know the start to finish of that research journey and you don't want them to have any questions. You don't want a description where simply it says you go here and they're like okay do I need to bring my own lunch? Should I pack walking shoes? Is this included? Is this not included? So it's really important to make sure you give the customer the full journey. Make sure your images are good. Our top sellers will always be products that have images showcasing the experience where people can physically be part of the journey. So, you know, things like don't have a drone shot as your main shot. It's beautiful, yes, but the suppliers aren't, the product customers, sorry, aren't in the air looking at it. So they won't get that view of the beautiful Cape Tribulation, but they might get the one from the lookout. So you want to show what they will physically see. Again, health and safety, make sure that's updated. People really want to see on it, and I'll touch on that a little bit later. And then the biggest one now is cancellation policy. And I know it is a very, uh, you know, contentious topic because a lot of operators have their ways of doing cancellations. But people right now need flexibility. And prime example is today's announcement with the border changing. Mm. People want that flexibility and they won't book if you 
have you know a four weeks in advance cancellation policy because there's just too much risk at the moment so you do need mm. as low as you know hours in advance people can book but a flexible policy is really integral right now yeah chloe i've even had a few people tell me you know the this idea of you get a credit is even not enough at the moment they really just want to know that if things don't work out they can get their money back maybe with a small fee but beyond that it's not really yeah the credit even the credit note doesn't seem to be doing it yes and that's definitely there's been lots in the news lately of people not getting their you know the credits have a six month expiry for example mm -hmm. we don't know when we can travel again so that yeah. six months isn't good enough anymore and i think it is something that customers are very aware of and i do envisage that travel insurance policies will change after this so it is something to be very mindful of Thanks, Chloe. I'd really love to bring Mick into the conversation now um, as a Hello World is one of Australia's leading and most visible travel companies and they've been incredibly busy over the last few months. I'd love you to walk us through, if you wouldn't mind, Mick, what the distribution is that you offer for the Queensland tourism operator. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, thank you, Sophie. Um, so yeah, I'll just give you a bit of a rundown. As you can see in the image there, Hello World Travel, I'm sure you've all heard of this before, but we are quite a big beast and there's different um, you know, channels that you can see, see in the image. But what we are basically is a travel distribution company that's based in Australia, providing international and domestic packages to clients all around the world. We have uh, more than 2,200 staff based uh, in Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, America, Asia, uh, India, UK and Europe. Um, to give you a bit of background about Hello World, it was launched in 2013 after a consoli consolidation of um, legacy brands, Harvey World Travel, Travel Scene, Jet Set and Travel World. Uh, and then there was a merger with the AOT Group um, in 2016, and then the business uh, formally changed its name to Hello World Travel in 2017. Uh, we have over 2,400 members uh, in the retail space across Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and they include the fully branded Hello World stores that you've probably seen uh, and uh, you know the nice blue logos. Uh, we also have Hello World Associate stores. Um, a lot of those are in in our regional areas, um, you know, which which are, which I can touch on a bit more um, as as we go through this because it's a big part of our business. We also have the Hello World Business Travel, um, Magellan Travel, uh, travel brokers in New Zealand, and then we also have um, the home-based agency group, MTA Travel, and uh, and also a smaller group called the My Travel Group. Um, what you'll find from our travel agents, our retailer travel agents, is that they're a leading network of passionate and engaged travel agents um, throughout Australia. And, and what I, I suppose sets us apart um, from our competition is that the average tenure of, of our um, retail consultants is 18 years. Um, so we know our customers and our travel um, alike as well. Mm. Okay, just going on to the next slide. So as you can see, this is basically um, the area that, that I mainly work in. Um, so we've got Sun Lover Holidays and Viva Holidays. That's our in-house wholesale brands um, for Hello World Travel Group. Um, through these two brands, we have access to over 2,065 retail travel agencies in Australia, including the Hello World Travel Network. Uh, we have the ability to connect and promote packages uh, and products to the widest range of um, retail travel agency network nationally. Um, we can also provide end-to-end -end solutions, including product and package development, event tourism, uh, retail network communication and training platforms as well. Um, just in our um, wholesale travel team, we have over 20 um, sales consultants that are out on the road, uh, basically pushing your products on the day-to-day -day basis. Um, we also have um, direct to consumer brands as well. So both the Viva Holidays and the Sun Lover um, Holidays brands uh, are, are direct to consumer and that and that seems to be growing uh, more and more each week, which is great as well. Um, and yeah, we basically do a lot of significant marketing activity um, to generate you know, um, results for you, um, targeted to consumer and also trade at a national, state and local level as well. Um, and through that, we also have access to extensive sales data. So we have an understanding of the peak, of the peak sales um, booking periods and travel periods. We know when the best time it is to be in the market. Um, mm. We have the optimal product mix um, to develop packages and to generate the largest increase um, for visitor numbers and room nights. Um, we source market focus, so we know when the sales are coming from and develop media plans to reflect this as well. Uh, and what I also want to touch on as well is that we 
with the Hello World Travel customers, there's an 80% higher repeat, a repeat purchase um, intention than all other Australian retail travel brands as well. Um, and then the other um, channel that we've got there is Ready Room. So that's our low touch booking platform. And this gives our agents more control and flexibility when making a booking. So that's more for our dynamic uh, pricing inventory as well. Um, then you can see the Hello World uh, retail network there that I've touched on. But as you can see there, the other retail partners, that they're, they're the other travel agency groups that we work with that, um, that book through us as well. Certainly covering all bases. You didn't draw a breath there. I think we've got a really good understanding <laughs> of all the areas that Hello World certainly goes into. I'd love to just um, to bring Brock back at this point. Mick, we'll we'll talk to you a little bit more later. You know, you mentioned sure. earlier this, you know, the increased interest in in packages, for example. And whenever we talk about the holidays, we we often hear that term. Oh, I want a, a package deal. So I guess it's a lot of uh, people who have been a part of the registration process for today want to know a little bit more about what packaging is and what it's going to look like and how it's going to work moving forward. And Mick, keeping you here, of course, if you can you know, add anything from your experiences over the last few months with Hello World, that'd be fantastic. Can't sure. hear you. Can't hear you, Mick. Up uh, that note, oh. there you go. Sorry, I just Brock, had to be Brock? unmuted. So, oh, so sorry about Brock, yeah, Brock. yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, and yeah, obviously a package deal. That is what everyone wants because they want this perception they're getting a deal, and that's mm. what uh, packaging tells people. And I ask you, so for you, you're a consumer. What what do you like mm. to see in a package deal? Ah, uh, oh, geez, how long's a piece of string? Um. <laughs> I, I, like, I actually like when there's options within the package. So you might be able to do an A or a B stream so that I still feel like it's a little bit more customised for what I might be looking for, particularly if I've got the family in tow. You know, now my kids are older. So, um, you know, I often look at things and I go, well, well, I don't have kids that can travel for free. They're now travelling as adults. So where can I find what I feel is a bit of a value add when you're travelling as a family and still footing the bill in its entirety? Yeah, um, and then so I guess probably one of the things. And that, that's great, you know, everyone's looking for something different in their packaging. And, and that's what packaging is. It's about creating value and giving people a reason to buy. Uh, and that's mm. what we want to do with our packaging. Now, now, something that's important with the packaging is there has to be true value. Uh, the the consumer's very savvy now. They know when the sheep's being pulled over their, uh, sorry, the wool's being pulled over their eyes. And, and the other important factor is dealing with the trade is you have to include commission still in the package. So you can't try and say, hey, for this part, uh, it, it's, it's commissionable, this part isn't. Now, there are some tricks that, that you can do in that area. And again, I encourage people to get on the online coaching to talk about those tricks. But the reason we as operators want to do packaging to go that extra step is one, of course, to drive sales to off-peak periods. You know, that's that's the very simple reason. It's also expanding the sale. Uh, for a hotel, it might be taking a booking from five nights to seven nights, which for strata title owners is very important with their exit clean costs. Uh, for a tour operator, it might be having an add-on, maybe adding a meal to the, the tour on the day. Partnerships is joining with other operators and then that increases your sales force again and increases the attractive nature of, of your product. It also helps to differentiate your product. You know, a very simple one. Think of two hotels that are very similar. One offers breakfast, one doesn't. A lot of people will lean towards the option with the breakfast. Obviously, target markets is something that everyone's very, everyone's heard of the honeymoon package or the luxury package, but it doesn't just have to be that. As a tour operator, there might be a niche there for bird watchers. So you include something within your tour that's attractive to bird watchers. So, you know, that's a sort of targeting. And also education. You can really teach people not only about your product, but about your region. So imagine you're an, you're an outback property that's very close to an indigenous rock art site. You could include that in your three night package, your three night package, a, a tour to that site, which teaches people that you've got close proximity to that attraction. So there's sort of reasons, you know, why we want to create packaging. Probably the next point I want to ask is, and a lot of people have asked through the question is, how do I do it? And how do I create that value? So uh, you see there, I've created into two points. There, there's internal packaging, there's external packaging. Now, internal packaging is aspects that you, the operator, control. Now, and I also break this into two areas. 
there's aspects that you can control in cost. For example, a hotel adding breakfast, which we've already mentioned. For a tour operator, maybe it's throwing in a free hat, but their costs you have to add to the total price. Okay, mm -hmm. then there's what I think is really important and what's really come on in the last five years, it's perceived value. It's something that you as an operator doesn't really cost you much, but to the consumer, they see great value in it. Now, the most basic one for accommodation, late checkout. Instead of checking out at 10, you check out at 12. As a hotelier, doesn't really cost you that much more. Okay, for a tour operator, you know, something is maybe priority seating, roping off some seats at an attraction that, oh yes, you get to sit in that area. Doesn't cost you anymore, but there's great perceived value to the client. So, you know, that's the sort of area you want to try and really build up your packaging. External packaging is fairly explanatory. It's joining with another partner. Okay, as a reef operator, maybe joining with accommodation provider. Uh, just a, a, something to really note in this area, two aspects is one, make sure the, the product you're partnering is, with is also offering value. You know, don't just you offer value and they give you your, their normal deal. The other aspect, if, if you're going to lead the package is make sure you're winning in the package. You don't want to do all this work and then you're maybe sending all the money to another partner. All right, so make sure there's value for you there also. Mick, do you have something to add there? Particularly, as you mentioned earlier, what you're able to really look at is the data. And I think, you know, particularly as we keep mentioning the changes that we've seen in this year, where are you seeing most of the energy go when it comes to packaging? Yeah, that's right. So that's that's one thing that we that we that we can do is we can see like different tour companies, for example, that are selling really well, say for in, in tropical North Queensland, and we can we can create a package and, and package it up together with some of those accommodations, um, you know, and, and make that complete package. And we work obviously closely with the airlines as well. So we can, you know, put, put it all in there because at the end of the day, the clients and the agents just want that one price um, because they don't want it to be unbundled, basically. They want it to be one complete package um, so that, it, that that way they can, um, you know, that it creates a lot more value for them as well. So, Brock, speaking of value, let's have a look at some of these more specifically. So these are packages on the next slide that look like they are price driven. Yeah, hey, this is very much the, the very basic price driven. Great for driving business into your off-peak periods. I, I picked five days in Airlie Beach on the Sun Lover Holidays website, and this, this is what I got. And the pay stay package is very common these days. It's very easy. It's easy for the consumer to understand. And there's different aspects there. And, and for touring, you can also do things like buy one tour, you get the second tour for 20% off. It's, it's very much price driven. The next one, uh, Mick, if you'd like to speak to it, is is more about the value add. These this idea of, as Brock said, partnering or having additional inclusions. Yeah, that's right. So you know, trying to create as much value as possible is 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 what works really well. It's like you said, it's the perceived value. So the late checkout, um, things like you know, even including like a bottle of wine, um, you know. It, because the way that you can put it in the package is it might only cost you say twenty dollars from you know from where you get it at a wholesale price, but the the way that you can package it up as the perceived value is it, is that it's valued at fifty dollars if they were to to buy it from a restaurant, so to speak. So uh, different things like that, just try and include as much as you can. We we know that that's um, the way that a lot of other companies are working now, and and to have those included inclusions with us as well is um is really important, um and that and that's what you can see here on these slides here. Yeah, and, and just jumping in there, uh, Sophie and Mick, you, you look at the Brisbane package. Um, they're obviously aiming at couples, so they're doing their target market. Uh, they've got two nights at the McEwa Brisbane, and then they've got three inclusions. Two of them I'd be call, called perceived value, not costing the hotel anything. That's the complimentary upgrade, that's the late checkout. Then they've got the real cost, which is the breakfast. Now, breakfast is something's really important, especially in this COVID marketplace. And, and this is how people have to look at how they tie this into their packaging. Now, we know buffet breakfasts can't be done anymore. You know, no safety there. How do you word that differently? How do you sell that differently? Now, you can maybe list it as an a la carte breakfast. You could even go the step further and offer room service breakfast room service. so people mm. get that safety. Now, a lot of that properties... Would get me, that, that, 
That would win me over every time, bro. Got you every time. There you go. <laughs> and, and of course, you know, there's a lot of people listening who don't have re restaurants, but there's nothing wrong with doing a food hamper for breakfast, you know, mm. delivering fresh bread and, and milk each morning. So think, how can I work that in that packaging? And I can assure you that save $60 in the top corner, most of that value has probably come through the complimentary upgrade and the late checkout. That's how they're showing the value to the client. Right, and and you'll see that below Great. too the the save dollars with the two tours being booked. Um, I've actually done that tour, the uh, the ballooning in the morning and then the jet boat ride. And I can assure you, after waking up at four o'clock, you want the uh, the thrill of the jet boat boat ride to wake you up again at about ten thirty in the morning. Um, <laughs> And, and as Mick said earlier, the, the, the Port Douglas package there is the classic example of the client wanting everything in one price. Seven nights, yeah. reef tour, nice little internal inclusion, fruit platter. So that makes life very easy for the agent and the consumer. Mm. You, you know, when we look at target markets, I think that this is really important because you don't want to be in a situation where you just throw everything at a wall and hope that something sticks. If you're going to the trouble to create packages, how important is it to make sure that you're also targeting specific markets? Yeah, very true. And, and there's all types of different ways to, to target markets. Um, you know, there's experiences, ex making things exclusive, uh, also looking at market segments. Now, you look at the hot air balloon. Now, I don't know how you were proposed for marriage, Sophie, but uh, there's a package there where you actually have a marriage proposal package. Uh, I've got to admit, so that's, long that's ago. a little bit unique. <laughs> so long ago, Brooke, I barely remember. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then below it uh, is a really interesting package that's on, on Viator, being a private tour up to the Sunshine Coast in Noosa. Mm. Now, a recent TripAdvisor survey since COVID has hit has shown that 62% of people now find private touring more appealing. So I throw that out there to all the people who have attractions and touring, what can you do to create a more private experience? Okay. Mm. And then on the right, the classic family package. Um, and yes, the mantra is doing a very cheap deal at uh, pay four, stay seven. So three free nights in there and there's a Coranda tour. But what I really wanna highlight is how they've advertised the price. Now, you as a, as a family person, Sophie, you're not interested in a per person cost, either as I, mm -hmm. as a family man. Um, we wanna know what the total cost is and there's been great effective sales strategies in advertising the total price for the family of four. So that, that's mm -hmm. something to note on how you present a package also. Um, Mick, I'm loving that there is so much focus obviously on the drive market and some really creative ways to be able to present a self-drive itinerary. Here's one here that's been packaged up in a deal. Would you like to walk us through this one? Yeah, so again, again, we when we look at the self-drive packages, we want everything included in it. And um, and these, this is one that we've got just basically in, in Western part of Queensland, just out of Brisbane, but we, we have these obviously all over Queensland and um, they're really popular because the, the clients will get the car hire included um, they'll get the accommodation included, they'll have some attractions included as well. Um, and then from a value add, from our point of view, we usually include some extras like a backpack full of um, goodies, such as like um, roadmaps and um, stuff on local attractions in the areas as well. And, and then these type of packages are only going to become more important with the current was, uh, you know, state borders. Yeah, I was going to say, I can see that this is going to be certainly a, a, a lot of energy. I really love the idea that you know, for people who've maybe not done a drive for a while and aren't familiar with the places, there is a certain level of comfort and security in knowing that your accommodation is going to be there and that someone else has vetted it for you in this case. And, and the other thing to keep in mind with these as well, the way that we put it together is when, the way that we sell it to our clients is that it's a, you don't have to just stick to that itinerary. So if they do want to add an extra night in Roma, they can do that. Or if they don't want to have the car hire, they might have their own car. We can we can piece it together and, and change it for them as well. Yeah. I'm um, just on to the next slide, Brock. This is, again, just another example of some exclusives and that feeling that the consumer is getting something special. 
Yeah, and, and this is the type of packaging that's really come to the fore in the last five years or so. It, it's creating such big value uh, that companies like Ignite and Luxury Escapes have been so effective in doing. Um, as you can see in this package up at uh, RACV Noosa, there are so many inclusions there. And then Sophie, mm -hmm. even getting back to your comment, you want flexibility. That's where a resort credit is great. You know, you get the decision, do you just spend yeah. it at breakfast or do you spend it in cocktails by the pool? Um, you, you can make that uh, that flexibility there. What really is highlighting is what I've circled. You know, they've got the price at four ninety nine, but look at the the line below it. There's a thousand and fifty two dollars worth of value in the package, which they're saying is fifty three percent off. Now, I, I do want to warn everyone before you go out and create some magical value numbers. The A Triple C are very hot on this sort of thing um, and this sort of advertising. And I can assure you, companies like Ignite and Luxury Escapes and and all the companies are, are very careful in making sure the numbers are add up. Um, though I've got to admit that the, the second bottom one where you get complimentary use of the courtesy shuttle bus is a little bit of an interesting bonus item. But but this is the type of thing where you get a little bit creative with your packaging. Mm. Obviously, to the next slide, we are more specifically talking to some of the challenges that we're now faced with with COVID. Yeah, and and this, this is just some tips of, of what you've got to look for. And, and you know, Chloe already touched on a couple of these. Um, obviously, it's a new market, and, and this has been mentioned in the webinars before. Um, just mm. because something used to be doesn't mean it's going to be in the future. Just because September, October was peak season, school holidays in the past, doesn't mean it's going to be going forward with, with what's happening. Um, mm. Sophie, uh, sorry, Chloe mentioned uh, the safety aspect. It's so important to get out to all your trade partners. What's your COVID safety plan? What's the accreditation you've got? Um, in that TripAdvisor survey I mentioned, they've stated now that 86% of people state cleanliness is now very important to their booking. So, you know, that's, that's a massive change in, in the figures. That also leads to flexibility which as Chloe also mentioned, and I personally think this one's got a little bit to go. It's it's probably gone a little bit too much to the consumer. But in that same TripAdvisor survey, they said 76 people must, not just they'd like it, but they must have flexible cancellation fees. So that, that's really important on how you deal with the trade going forward and what conditions you set. And you've got to make sure the trade's informed on what you're doing. And that also comes into the next point on transparency. We all know everyone lo loves looking at TripAdvisor. People are going to look at how you are uh, addressing those two issues of safety and flexibility. And they're going mm -hmm. to look for reviews and feedback. The biggest point I get from all the trade I've spoken to over the last six to eight weeks, they want your rates for next year, desperately now. Chloe mentioned travel credits. A lot of them have all this money on file. They want people to make bookings, but they need your rates and information. So please act on that. Get your rates mm -hmm. online and out to all the distributors right now. And and, and Thanks, the last well. point, yeah, is, is just back yourself. Ahead. Yeah, sorry. Yep. Identify an opportunity and make sure you go for it. You might need six options for it, but you've got to identify mm -hmm. an opportunity and not just sit on your hands. You know, off the back of that, Mick, unfortunately, you know, COVID obviously and its impacts aren't going to be going away anytime soon. And there will be strong reliance on the domestic market and, and you know, and really within the domestic market. So what are new factors that operators should consider and, and affect really and put into action with the trade and finally their clients in this new environment? Yeah, as, as I mentioned um, a bit earlier that we work in both the international and the domestic markets and as we know that the um, the international market is is now off the target you know off the table for for a while for the foreseeable future what that's also meant is that we've also got a lot a lot of clients that have had to um, to cancel their bookings to go overseas and in fact has, has meant that we've got a lot of travel credits for those clients mm -hmm. Um, and we've given them pretty flexible um, opportunity to use those credits until the, the end of June next year. But in all honesty, there's probably, we don't know what's going to be open internationally in that time. So it will mean that a lot of these people will need to spend that money domestically. And, you know, the biggest part of our domestic market is certainly Queensland. So there's a big opportunity to get a lot of that money that was meant to be spent overseas uh, in, the, in the domestic market. And more specifically, um, what are what are some of the things that you're seeing happening at Hello World? Yeah, so some of the things that we're doing, um, obviously the the way that we do business has changed as well. So 
previously, like I mentioned, we've got a sales team of 20 um, that, that would go around and visit the agents um, face to face. Um, so we've now had to be a bit more creative. So we're now doing a lot of these type webinars uh, with them as well and, and virtual sales meetings. Um, we did a, a webinar for the Wit Sundays um, about two weeks ago. We had over 350 travel agents um, sign up to, to watch that webinar. We did Tropical North Queensland last week, same sort of some sort of numbers. So we are getting a lot of our, our trade partners that are that are looking to um you know to learn during this time and really because a lot of the agents as well in, in the past have only sold cruise or international before. So now there's an opportunity for them to tap into the domestic market. So everyone is being gung-ho and proactive and, and excited for it as well. Um, we've got our Queensland Good To Go campaign currently uh, in market at the moment and we're getting some really good inquiry for that. Um, it would be great if, if, if you know, the borders weren't closing and changing all the time because I'm sure that we'd be seeing a lot more numbers coming through in, in terms of those bookings. But we're getting a lot of, um, lo lot of quotes in particular. So I'm hoping that once they, there's a bit more certainty in the market that a lot of those quotes will start to convert to bookings as well. Um, and I guess it is important to be um, a preferred supplier with us because um, you know when we are doing these webinars and we are doing these campaigns that the, the the products that we feature in in those um, campaigns and in those webinars are our preferred su supplier partners first of all as well yeah. uh, and then I just wanted to touch on as well was the uh, the hello world TV show that we've had we've um, we've done two seasons on that now um, the second season um, was gone on to Channel 7 as of October last year, and that was for 18 weeks. So um, as you can see, some famous faces there, but um, a great opportunity as well as um, to get your product on, on, on that TV show over that time too. Thanks so much, Mick. We'll give you a little bit of a break now. I'll bring Brock back in. You know, We talk about the traditional trade and the fact that all businesses have had to pivot, that word we've heard so much over the last few months, Brock. How can we look at the way traditional traders has made some change. Yeah, hey, and obviously for the domestic market, there's two main players, as Mick just went through, Hello World Travel being the one and Flight Centre being the other, that uh, they really do dominate the market. And, and one thing to really note between the two, they're very different in that Hello World's a franchise model where Flight Centre's a wholly owned model. So Hello World definitely has a little bit more flexibility within their retail agents on what they can do. Mm -hmm. Flight Centre, well, when their boss Screw Turner says wear a red shirt next week, they all wear a red shirt next week. So that there's far more control there. Um, there are some other smaller players, such as over in WA, there's Discover Australia Holidays and, and some other players, but um, they really do hold the power of those two. Now, now just touching on Flight Centre, uh, just to say where they're at at the moment in the market, is once we jump to the next slide, yep. Um, now, especially for the accommodation guys, um, you can actually be sold in four different ways through a flight centre agency. There's their internal wholesaler, Infinity Holidays. You can be sold via Expedia and you can be sold via hotel beds. And if also you're, you're participating with Ignite Travel in their flight centre exclusive, you can be sold in that manner. So there are a range of options that you can access a flight centre retail agent. Now, it's been fairly public knowledge um, with Flight Centre, they've closed over 100, 450 stores across Australia, which is, is a hell of a lot, about 50%, but it still leaves them with 400 stores, which is still a very large yeah. footprint across the country. Yeah. Um, their marketing and product teams are very much on skeleton staff at the moment. So if you wanna update any of your info, your rates or your packages, it really can only be done dynamically. They just don't have the staff in the offices at the moment to, to do the, the manual stuff. Um, Infinity Holidays, their internal wholesaler, um, as many of the, the tour and attraction guys will know that if their systems now do not connect with Livin, which is the, going to be their new res system, you just won't be able to be booked. So that's something that you've really got to explore and make sure that happens. And with the accommodation guys, they'll be launching a new system in the next six to 12 months, where I again believe direct connection will become vital. Now, Mick touched on travel credits. Flight Centre have millions of dollars sitting there that they want to use uh, from their clients. Uh, and now they're valid for travel until December next year. So, you know, that's a huge opportunity for the domestic market because I really can't see a lot of international travel happening throughout 2021 with the way things are going. Um, mm. They have been operating a Queensland campaign already. Um, the usual forces ha have been popular in T&Q, the islands, Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast. 
But what has really changed in the post-COVID market is the dollar values of the bookings have doubled. And this is what they, they're finding really surprising. Everyone wants everything confirmed from their accommodation mm. to their touring or done beforehand. Okay, And it's really also important to note, it's not just Queensland hunting this domestic market. It is all of Australia. So they're saying mm. very strong sales for Northern Territory and Broome is virtually chockers, but Perth people can't leave WA and they can't go to Bali for the 30th time. So really Broome's their only tropical option at the moment. Now, moving on from, from the traditional trade to, to more the online system where you're dealing direct with the consumer. I think everyone's familiar with, with the power that Expedia and Booking.com and, and maybe to a lesser extent, a go, a go to do too. Obviously, direct connection is vital in that area now for the, the hotels with their channel manager. But what, what I will touch a little bit more on is Qantas Hotels because they do have a little bit happening in the near future. Uh, Qantas Hotels for some is the old Haru, um, fairly dreadful name, but they have access to a huge database. They do all of the Qantas frequent flyer um, hotel stuff. That's 14 million members. They have 5 million members of their own database. Now, the exciting aspect is as of October 1, they will be bringing the Qantas Holidays brand back to market. Uh, it's a brand that's been in hiatus for a little while uh, after Hello World passed on it, after having it. So Qantas Hotels will be bringing it back to market as an online direct to consumer. So that's something that's really exciting. Now the bottom two don't really belong on this page, but I had nowhere else to put them. So I put them here. Um, Airbnb is really there for some of you smaller operators, especially those with apartments. Uh, it's a great distribution tool and they only charge three or 4%. So fantastic on the commission front. So, you know, jump on board there if you have a product that suits that. My Queensland Holidays, which is part of Ignite, again, doesn't suit this page at all. And I know James is probably not happy that I put it there, um, but it, they offer great packaging, which we've seen before and it's direct to the consumer, but you still deal with the agents at Ignite. So, you know, there's some great option there for the accommodation. Now, moving on from them, they're all direct to the consumer. Now, there is also agents who only deal with the trade. So companies like hotel beds and web beds. So they're online travel agents who only deal with travel agents. Now right. booking.com and Expedia also do this, but these guys only exclusively deal with agents. And, and they have some great reach. Hotel beds deal with 60,000 people worldwide. They did 60,000 room nights into Queensland last year and 20% of those sales came from Australian travel agents. So there's real uh, potential there. Now, please note too, they do touring and attractions, so it is there for everyone. Web beds, a little bit of a smaller operation, very similar to ho hotel beds, and is actually the B2B arm of Webjet. So there's some real potential in those guys. Keeping on the online theme uh, for the touring and attraction guys, obviously we know Viator is the big boy in this area, and uh, I'll uh, get Chloe to run through some information in a sec for you. But there are other options. Um, Experience Oz, there's Expedia Local Experts. The, the guys in the middle, Kluke and Get Your Guide, always been a little bit more inbound. Kluke was a very heavy Asian focus and Get Your Guide very heavy European, but they do have domestic business. So as a touring and attraction product, you need to be connected with them. Again, my bottom line probably shouldn't be there, uh, but Big Red Group, which is adrenaline.com.au and also the Red Balloon, maybe yeah. they're things in the past you said, no, not for us. Again, we've spoken, this is a new market, have a look at it. Mm. Airbnb is really great for those small private operators. They only deal with very unique personalized product. So if that suits you, definitely get onto Airbnb experiences. It's definitely really clear that um, because there are so many platforms, you really need to know where it is best placed for you to be putting your product so that you're speaking to the right audience. Definitely, and, and you've got, and my point is Sophie, you need to have all the information and then make the best decision for your business. Not yeah, all of absolutely. these aspects suit every business. Um, Brock, that's a perfect opportunity to give you a little break and bring Chloe back into the conversation because obviously this is your cue, Chloe, to really give us um, a bit of an insight into the current market trends 
from a Viator perspective? Yeah, thank you. So um, as you've all heard, Brock's kind of mentioned a little bit about this TripAdvisor white paper that I do highly recommend to everyone kind of have a look at, as there are quite a few key stats that have come out of it um, and obviously shape the market that we as Viator see as well. Mm -hmm. um, now they're on the screen, so I'll kind of let everyone have a bit of a look through in light of time, but there are a few that I really want to kind of push for and that I really want to reinstate that have been mentioned on this call. And one of those is 53% of people have said they'll do more in-depth research. So this definitely comes down to, as Brock was saying, the billboard effect. People are looking across multiple platforms. They are really doing their research and they are definitely, you know, landing on your own websites, um, whether they can book or not. So it's really important to make sure that you know, you're kind of across multiple platforms, but again, that are right for your market, but that people can see you correctly. Um, and along those research lines, they make sure that there's, you know, the information's there so they feel safe and, you know, they trust booking with you. Um, you know, again, 76% want that flexible cancellation, 70% um, want to book in advance. So having a look at, you know, live availability or real time is something that we are definitely seeing as a huge trend, um, you know, not just in Queensland, Australia in general, but globally. So. For specifically Queensland, again, it's that self-drive market. It's understanding the Australian buyer. So everyone overseas loves the Australian traveller. Um, we spend big when we travel. So there's no reason that people won't be spending big now travelling their own. And especially if we're talking credits that people are having, people are going to be spending those dollars um, in Australia. And looking at those packaging is really important. Um, or looking at your value add. It's not necessarily something that I recommend going straight into discount world. Um, I think it needs to be a very well educated um, decision that you make if you are going to discount because as you can see, 79%, um, sorry, there you go, 53% will seek value. Um, so it's not necessarily the lowest price anymore. People aren't kind of going, okay, I need to find the cheapest deal on the cheapest website. It's about finding value for what they're getting. And if it is those little perks and quirks along the way, I think people will be more likely to purchase um, on those, you know, trusted platforms. So it's really important to make sure you kind of do that. But in Queensland, we're seeing a really good, um, you know, high bookings in advance, but then also last minute bookings is still really important for that self drive mm -hmm. market where people are, you know, given Queensland, given Australian temperature, it's all about what the weather's doing. So people want to make sure that if I am doing, you know, the hot air balloon tour, or if I am going onto the reef, or if I am going to travel into the outback, I want to know that the weather will be okay. So having that last minute bookability is really important. Again, family circumstances change. The kids may really want to do a certain experience one day, and then you ask them the day before, and they go, nah, not interested. So <laughs> Making sure you have that flexibility is really important because it is going to take a little bit of chopping and changing from some travellers um, on this front. So be prepared for that. Um, and I will just say mobile is key, making sure that you are mobile ready when people are doing those, you know, looking through the various sites. If you don't have a friendly mobile, if you don't have updated content, um, contact numbers and things like that, it is going to deter travellers. So use this downtime to make sure that you know, everything is correct on your own website, that you have that bookability, your rates are correct, um, and things that are really important to Australian travellers is that trust. They will book through a trusted partner, and if, you know, things are clunky or information's incorrect, um, the Australian market will deter and go somewhere else. Thanks, Chloe. We'll bring Brock back into the conversation again. And if you've got anything to add to this one as we start to talk about group buying and, and some of these other brands, Brock, that now are really familiar to people um, and have become another platform for us to be able to, as consumers, look towards where we're going to choose to spend our money. Yeah, hey, you know, the, the whole group buying companies like Luxury Escapes and, and Ignite have really taken the market by storm in the last five or six years. Uh, it's mm -hmm. been really surprising. Uh, there's a number of them. Now, I will state this distribution is not for everybody. Um, there will be some operators that will will shiver in, in just even the mention of them. Uh, but again, it's a new market. Make sure you're aware of your options and then make the best decision for your company. Um, there's Luxury Escapes. Scoopon are also owned by Luxury Escapes, but they do their three and a half, four star options. You've also got Groupon Travel. There's Tripper Deal. And then again, um, there's Flight Center exclusives under Ignite. A little bit different to the other guys because they all go direct to consumer. 
the flight center exclusives is through a retail agent, though luxury escapes is starting to distribute through retail agents also. Now, just to go into luxury escapes a, a little bit more in detail. Yeah, yeah because I, I've had a number of friends book through luxury escapes and I've ha spent a bit of time looking on the website myself. It really seems to be quite a phenomenon, which to be honest, sometimes it seems a little too good to be true. They've got some deals on at the moment, even to places where I know traditionally uh, uh, that higher end certainly appeal to the, the high value traveller that are really great deals. Yeah, and then they they are, and and that goes back to a lot of the building value that we talked about and the perceived value that we spoke in the packaging area. But they they really are are a strong force, luxury escape. You know, they've got up to nearly two million in their database now. And what is really interesting of their database, it's a huge amount of repeat customers. And not only that, is that they travel every year through luxury escapes. So they did two hundred thousand nights last year. Uh, across the world. Now, a huge amount of that is especially into Asia, to countries like Bali and Thailand. So they've got this repeat clientele who want to travel all the time, who can't travel overseas. So they're really going to be looking at domestic options. Now, the one thing I'll give Luxury Escapes and, and also Ignite is unlike some of the other industry who have maybe sat on their hands for the last month or two trying to wait to see what happened, they have been aggressive. They've really been going out to the market with strong deals. Um, their research at the end of June showed that um, their interstate searches were up 260% for Australia. Within Queensland, for Queenslanders looking for a Queensland holiday, was up 180%. Deals that they've had operate since lockdown started, since COVID has been around. A North Queensland hotel did over four and a half thousand room nights. Uh, a property in the Hunter Valley did over three and a half thousand room nights. So that's that's a huge amount of volume. As I said, not for everybody. And there's also, they do offer some options for smaller properties. So just don't think because I'm smaller, I, I can't sort of be in this, but it really is something to have a look at. But as I said, not for everyone, that's for sure. Um, now getting on to the last part of the market. So we're definitely in the home stretch at the moment is the closed user group and rewards um, mm. part of the market. Now this is probably a part of the industry that a lot more people aren't familiar with and, and Ignite are one of the major players here. It's quite amusing. Uh, the three companies I have there, Ignite, Leisure Group and Yonder Holiday are all based in Broad Beach about 100 metres away from each other. So it is quite a little cosy little group they've got. But what this part of the market is, is one part, the, the, the rewards is where they deal with corporate partners to service their clients. And you, you look there at Ignite at the large range of corporate clients they have with over 500,000 active members. Then they have their closed user group. Now, now what they're referring to there are people take out memberships or are a part of a group. And again, they get access to special deals. You can see there with Ignite, Flybys Travel, NRMA, RAA. So it, seven million in that database. So there's huge potential through those channels. Leisure Group, which has been around for many years, a lot of people would know the Discover Queensland brand. Now they have 280,000 in that database. What's really important, especially from what we've heard today with Sydney, is 40% of that database are Queenslanders. So they will be Queenslanders looking to travel in Queensland. Their mm. corporate arm is high tide holidays that deal with corporate companies. Now, the one down the bottom, I, I would guess most people haven't heard of. They're a brand new company, haven't actually launched yet, but they're their former owners of Leisure Group, uh, Yonday Holiday Club. And what they're going to do is run a subscription base. So you actually pay a membership to get access to their travel and lifestyle deals. So you know, keep an, an eye out for that one in the future. We're going now, to wrap up where we started, Brock. You know, we talked about this idea that there are so many operators who have been traditionally focused on an international market and we really need everybody to shift focus just a little bit. Yeah, and, and this is one of the questions we, we got in the pre-registration for the webinar is, what do I do about ITOs wanting to get into the, the domestic market? And, and there's companies like Australia and Beyond Holidays, Southern World Vacation, and even the Japanese, traditional Japanese op operator, Kintetsu. Um, my question, why not? 
um, it's a new market. Um, if you haven't dealt with inbounders before, um, one thing to ask if you want to check for our credibility is, is are they ATEC members? And I'd also really encourage to contact your RTO for recommendation and other operators in your area to see if they've worked for them. The yeah. two factors I'd also tick off when dealing with an inbounder, one, get your terms and conditions confirmed with them and make sure they're your domestic terms and conditions. Don't be scared if you haven't dealt with them before to ask for prepayment, because that's obviously something very, very important in this uncertain market. The other point is make sure they're using your domestic rates and domestic packages. You know, you don't want an inbounder trying to book a, a, a domestic FIT on their inbound group rate, which we know would usually be far cheaper. Uh, so that's all I, all I really have to say. Um, guys, we do have a handout, uh, which is a checklist. It's about four pages. It, it's just a practical checklist to evaluate where you are with the trade and also mm. gives you a bit of a summary of all the companies we spoke to about today and that will he really help you to decide you know if you should be doing the online coaching which again I, I encourage everyone to do. Yeah Brock absolutely and I think that that's probably a really wonderful place for us to wrap up and I, I'd love Chloe and Mick to come back just so we can say thank you and goodbye because we have gone to time just perfectly. As we always say if you do have any additional questions that have been brought up by what you've heard from our speakers this afternoon, do feel free to email through to QTIC. They will do their level best to make sure that you're put in touch with the right person to be able to answer them for you. But of course, so much of what you've heard today can um, be learnt more about by attending uh, those workshops that we've talked about. So to register for our next web web webinar, which is domestic marketing and for that free online coaching that everybody has been referring to, make sure you visit Queensland Tourism Industry Business Capability Development Program through the QTIC Business Capability website. Once again, a reminder that all of the webinars that we've been hosting on a Wednesday afternoon will be available also to view through the QTIC website. So can I say to each of you, Brock, Chloe and Mick, thank you so much for sharing a little of your wisdom with us on this Wednesday <laughs> afternoon. And thank you to the Queensland Government, the Queensland Tourism Industry Council, Tourism and Events Queensland and the 13 regional tourism organisations for their continued support of this program. It is an initiative that has been proudly funded and supported by the Queensland Government through its Tourism Industry Business Capability Development Program. My name is Sophie Formica. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. We look forward to seeing you for our fourth and final webinar next Wednesday, the 5th of August. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Sophie. Thank Bye. you.